everyone, I'm Connie Roberts. You know, I was sitting in my friend's backyard recently and I was seeing the, all the birds and the butterflies and so I was fascinated by that and I thought, you know what, I want my yard to be like that. So I'm here at Chestnut Hill Nursery to find out from Tracy some more tips on how I can make my backyard more appealing to birds and butterflies. Tracy. Hey Connie, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. You know, I've been talking to you for a while about attracting hummingbirds and butterflies to my garden, so what do I gotta do? I'm you know, ready. <laughs> a lot of people come in here asking the same question, whether it's just to create more interest in gardening for their children, or just for their own enjoyment, sitting on their deck or patio, bringing birds, hummingbirds, butterflies into their garden. Um, but before we walk around and go shopping, which is the fun part, we need to consider a few key points when planning the garden. Location is the first thing to consider, Connie. You want to plant your garden in an area that gets at least six hours of sun per day. Butterflies are cold-blooded insects that often start their day by warming their bodies in the sun. Include some larger rocks that will warm up in the morning sun for them to play on. You know, I was reading that you should also pick somewhat of a shelter spot, you know, that's not windy. Why is that? Well, consider a butterfly's wings. You can almost compare them to tissue paper, and that's so delicate. So the less wind, the better. That makes a lot of sense. It sure does. So next, let's consider the host plants. We call this catering to caterpillars because they do have select plants that they prefer to lay their eggs on. Some of these plants include parsley, dill, snapdragon, yarrow, and milkweed. And are most of these plants readily available? Yes, they sure are. I know in my garden, I found eggs on my parsley before, and that's one of the easiest plants to grow. You can even start that from seed and have plants in just a few weeks. I was also reading that most butterflies only travel a few hundred miles from where they grow up as caterpillars. That's exactly right. So think about it. If you offer more host plants in your garden, you're essentially helping to increase the local butterfly population. So now we have created a nice environment for laying eggs. What's next? Well, the caterpillars emerge and begin to feed on the host plants. They spend a good part of their life cycle crawling on and eating their food source. After that, they may or may not wander away from the plant to begin the next phase of their life, which is transforming into an adult. Is this where they generally hang upside down in their chrysalis? Yes. And I know you're familiar with this stage, so why don't you explain this to our viewers? Well, in about two week period, inside the chrysalis, the body of the caterpillar basically breaks itself down. The cells put themselves back together into a new shape. Some parts of the body, like the legs, remain more or less unchanged during this process. It truly is amazing transformation. Then a butterfly emerges. Well, now we can talk about the plants that keep the butterflies visiting your yard and keep this whole process going. So let's walk around and find some plants for your garden, Connie. Okay, cool. Three traits your plants should have are color, fragrance, and shape. Uh, butterflies generally prefer lavenders, purples, and pinks. My favorite colors. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have a very acute sense of smell, so they can detect fragrances from quite a distance. Wow. And lastly, they sip nectar with their tongues, so provide plants that allow easy access for them to do that. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to pick up these impatience, right? Yep, that's perfect. Now, they usually do sun and shade. Some um, of these are going to prefer part shade to shade. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's another thing, too. Some people don't have sun, so they need to have some plants for shade. This columbine mm -hmm. is a good one. And also, I mean, you can see, we talked about pinks and purples, but we're putting reds on. Mm -hmm. um, that bright color will attract hummingbirds. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on. Okay, and I see some pinks up here. <laughs> and that's a good one, that's on our list. That's a full sun plant. Okay. 
I like these. And that's Those an nice annual. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think that you have some of them at home already. Mm -hmm. So it's also a good idea to plant annuals and perennials. So annuals will give you color all through the season from you know June till frost. Um, your perennials are something that comes back every year, so you can always count on them coming back. Right. I'm gonna grab some daylilies. Which those are my favorite. <laughs> that's a that's a rebloomer too, so that's nice. Unlike most perennials that have their bloom time at, at short, you know, short bloom time, these will bloom again. Okay. So I like to do quite a few of them. And then this is purple coneflower. Okay. This is probably, if you cannot plant anything else for butterflies, plant this. I mean, you see, we put them out front when they're in full bloom and they're just covered with butterflies. Nice. Beautiful plant too. Tell me about one more. Yes, we have one more, another great rebloomer, catmint, um, purple flowers right here. That's a great one. You know, sometimes it gets a little leggy as the season goes on. If you cut it back down to about three, four inches, it's going to flush out again and you'll get another bloom out of it. Oh, so great. that's great. What about our host plants? Basil? Uh, good point. Um, we should go pick up some parsley and dill. Um, they're, you know, inexpensive plants and they're great host plants. So okay. let's go down by the herbary and pick them out. Trace, look what I found in the garden center. <laughs> Perfect, the hummingbird feeder and, and nectar. Um, that, that'll lead us to our next conversation because you said you wanted to um, bring more hummingbirds into your yard. So we've already picked some flowers that will be good for that. Um, they generally tend to lead more towards the reds and the hot pinks. And um, one of the biggest differences between the hummingbirds and the butterflies is the shape of the flower. The hummingbirds generally like tubular flowers, something that they can stick, stick their beak into, like the daylilies or the wajilia, smaller flower, but same concept. Um, but in general, there are a lot of crossovers between plants that the hummingbirds like and plants that the butterflies like. This has been great information. Well, I <laughs> hope you start to get some in your yard. I know I will. Coming up next, we're going to talk about deer resistant plants. We are KMB Kids. That's right, my dad can fix anything. From well pumps and grinder pumps to water heaters and air conditioners, count on KMB to solve your plumbing, electrical, and HVAC issues. Give us a call for all your plumbing and electrical needs. You can contact us either at kmbplumbing.com on the web, or you can call us at area code 570-460-0111, and you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. First Northern Bank and Trust has deep roots in our community. Chartered 100 years ago, First Northern Bank and Trust has grown to 11 branches in the Poconos and Lehigh Valley. Longtime bank employees take pride and pleasure in providing a broad range of services to generations of customers. Today, First Northern Bank and Trust offers the latest in banking technology like remote deposits and online banking. For personal and business banking accounts and loans, contact First Northern Bank and Trust. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Overgrown trees and shrubs are an unsightly mess. McIntyre's Tree Service can help you get the most from your landscape by providing your trees and shrubs with the care they need throughout the year. ISA certified arborists will assess your situation and provide you with prompt, efficient tree maintenance. Whether you need a one-time visit to tame your yard or ongoing consistent tree care, McIntyre's Tree Service is committed to exemplary customer service and enhancing the appearance of your outdoor space. They offer a wide array of residential and commercial services, including tree removal, tree trimming and pruning, tree topping, land clearing, stump grinding, brush removal, and they'll perform a complete debris cleanup before leaving your premises. McIntyre's Tree Service in Sailorsburg. Call today, 610-762-0660 or visit them at McIntyreStreeService.com. Emergency service is available.
lots of people have deer on their property, but what's a great way to keep them out? <laughs> well, you know, it's true, Connie. I would say probably about 99 out of 100 people who come into the nursery here have deer problems. Um, basically, we, we try to, you know, educate them about the deer. Deer are creatures of habit. They're going to try to take the same path a lot. So, um, you know, you want to discourage them from your property if you can. But there are certainly deer-resistant plants that you can plant. Um, there are controls, sprays, and tablets you can use. Um, fencing, of course, is an option. Um, so let's start with the first one, okay. the deer-resistant plants. There are a handful of plants that you can plant that are absolutely positively, I've never heard anybody tell me that the deer eat these plants. Um, those things include ornamental grasses, junipers, um, dwarf Alberta spruce, Andromeda, and we'll take a look at these later on together so you can see what they look like up close. Um, but there are some tried and true plants that the deer definitely don't touch. Um, that's your best bet because then you don't have to worry about fencing, covering stuff with deer netting, spraying, you know, every seven to ten days or after it rains. So th those plants are your best choices. Now when you say fencing, how high do you gotta go? You know, truthfully, um, deer can jump over a fence that's eight foot high, so you have to go at least eight foot high. Um, you can fence uh, with deer netting. You can fence individual plants so they can't actually get to the foliage. Not, not the prettiest looking thing, but it's effective. Um, they do say that stockade fencing, that's a solid fence, is better. Uh, generally speaking, the deer will not want to go over something they can't see on the other side. There, you know, there's a fear there for them. So a solid fence is better than a see-through fence. But generally, eight foot high is is a safe bet. <laughs> what about um, a motion detected or motion detective uh, water? <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. Um, they don't like the motion. It's something that definitely works with them. So you can have a motion sensor on a sprinkler. Um, you know, if you're going to do that, you should make sure that you have a, um, like an infrared one for at night, otherwise they're only good during the day. The only problem with that is you can't leave it hooked up in the winter time because it's hooked up to your hose, your hose is going to freeze, so you have to come up with alternative methods in the winter to keep them off the property, which is when they're more hungry. <laughs> mm, like a snowball machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chase, let's talk more about repellent and keeping the deer out with other products. Okay, so some of the controls they have are um, sprays. Uh, deer out's one of them. Uh, definitely smells nice. It's like a minty smell, but same thing. You have to spray after it rains. If you spray it and then it rains, you have to spray again. And um, you have so to spray like... So it actually smells good. <laughs> yeah, it actually does. Liquid fence is another one. Um, very effective, not so nice smelling, but both of these products are very effective. Um, we do have some customers who have a severe deer problem where they say if they use one of the products too long, the deer become used to it. Um, so they have to kind of flip flop between the two products. But feedback we've gotten from our customers is that both of these are very, very effective. Now, Liquid Fence also has a, um, a granular. So you shake this into your garden beds and um, it's only good to plants two foot high though. Uh, this is a fragrance type thing. So, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't last very long and doesn't get, you know, doesn't get anything, control anything that's over two feet high. Okay. So, um, that's another one. Um, you can also use some deer netting. We talked about that before. Um, it's really just a very fine netting. You almost can't see it. Some people just wrap it around the plant itself and attach it with zip ties. Some people will actually put stakes up around each individual plant, but if they can't get to it, or if you put it right on the surface of a plant, um, what'll happen is they just, the, the deer netting coats it and they, they just can't grip the plant itself. Okay. Perfect. Tracy, what about other rodents like rabbits and skunks? They're the worst. <laughs> That's true. Um, when you have skunks in your yard, Connie, generally the problem is grubs. They'll come in at night and you'll see, you'll find some holes in the, the, on the surface of the lawn and they're digging for grubs. So if you have a skunk problem, more than likely you have to treat for grubs. Um, and that, that varies from the time of year because the grubs are actually Japanese beetles. So okay. They're the larvae of Japanese beetles. So what they do is in the fall, they work their way down, and then in the springtime, they work their way up, hatch, and become Japanese beetles. So what you should do is treat for both. 
treat for the Japanese beetles and also treat your lawn for grubs. And how do you do that? There's a granular grub control that you can apply to your lawn. Okay, what about rabbits? <laughs> rabbits are a tough one because rabbits will go after, like when your perennials start to come up in the springtime, you know, you'll see them one day and the next day they'll be gone. The rabbits like that tender new growth. Um, there is a product called Repelzol that you can spray. Um, I usually recommend mothballs actually. If you tamp a mothball in about halfway into the soil around your garden, it generally keeps the rabbits away and they won't munch. They just don't like the smell of it. Of course, it doesn't make your garden smell all that nice either, but <laughs> it keeps the rabbits away. Coming up next, container gardens are an easy way to give color around your landscape. Buona forchetta. Buona forchetta in Italy we have these, uh, these traditions that, that when, when somebody walk into the restaurants and make a eye contact with the chef, with the owner, and does with uh, two fingers, does like this. That's a mean I'm ready for some pasta. Buona forchetta, nice spaghetti in, in a fork is always the best thing you can happen to you. Watch Bueno Forchetta with Chef Nicola at these times on BRC 13. Joining me now is Kevin Barry of KMP Plumbing and Electric, and we're talking air conditioning. I see you put a new system here in this room. Yes, we put in a Tappan IQ drive system. It is a system that's a hybrid between a heat pump and a gas furnace. What basically it does is 98% efficient equipment with 25 sear equipment outside on the condenser. Um, what that means is your energy efficiency rate is very high and your usage is very low. So you're basically not using a lot of gas with this and you're not throwing a bunch of money out the window and unused resources. So why did you put a new system in here for them? The system that they had was outdated. Their, their energy bills were very high. Um, it was averaging anywhere from six to $800 a month for them to run the system. So it was basically, you know, outpricing the house. So Kevin, what are some of the features with this unit? It's a fully modulating gas furnace, which runs anywhere from 50% to 100% of its cap capacity, um, and as low as 15%. And every 60 seconds through the thermostat upstairs, it analyzes the indoor air temperature and then modulates accordingly. So it's not running at 100% capacity all the time. So it actually learns from the customer on your usages and then adjusts the house um, comfort levels accordingly. Now you have uh, something with the system that's a dehumidifier? Yeah, you can actually use a dehumidification program in the system through the thermostat also. And what that allows you to do is dehumidify the house out and um, actually bring a better indoor air quality to them. They also have a UV light. Yeah, there's a UV light that we installed on the back side of it, which also helps with the indoor air quality as far as animals, pet dander, bacteria, and mold that's in the ductwork are being pushed through the system. So if somebody's allergic to you know, mold and different things along that line, the UV light will help um, eliminate that so the quality is better for them. should someone consider having a tap and hybrid system? With the energy efficient performance and durable construction, the system is a great option for a homeowner. The heating and cooling Patrick system contains features that give the ability to provide the greatest amount of whole house comfort. An example being the variable speed motor and the unit provides dehumidification assistance and more even temperatures throughout the whole house with air quality. And if people want more information about this system and more, what should we tell them? Um, they can contact us at 570-460-0111 or they can go on the web and get us at kmbplumbing.com.
One of the best ways to add color to your landscaping is through container gardens, and there's so much fun to do. That's right, Connie. We have a lot of fun doing yours at your house. I know. Um, so what we have here is we have a shade one and a sun one. Um, we're going to plant them up. And uh, I just also wanted to point out that, you know, in our previous two segments, we talked about birds and the butterflies and the deer. Container gardens are a great way to, if you're out of space in your garden and you can't plant anything more, to plant new plants that will attract the birds and the butterflies and hopefully plants that you can grow on your deck if you have a raised deck um, with railing around it that you can't grow in your yard. Right. So it's a great way to, to, you know, meet those two purposes also. So, so I think you know how to do this already, but let's show our viewers. <laughs> So we have our pot here filled mostly with soil. Use a good potting soil, like a miracle Grow potting soil, something lightweight. miracle Grow has fertilizer in it. And once you have your plants picked out, what you want to do is just take them out of these containers. If they're root bound like this one, you want to break them up just so that they grow into the soil that you have in your container. This here's a spike, just for some texture. This one's a little creepy crawler. Yep, <laughs> yep. So we're gonna put this near the edge so that it hangs over the edge. We'll fill in with soil a little later. But that's gonna hang over the edge. And then we have our begonias for color. Now, some of you are probably asking why I'm putting begonias in my sun-loving container, but these begonias, they're called big begonias, they do well in sun or shade. So, you know, they're very versatile, they offer a lot of color, you don't have to deadhead them, which is one of my favorite features about them. So, and the bronze leaf is real nice. They come in both green and bronze leaf, so that's a nice feature. And then these here are a little calibrecoa. They're like little mini petunias. That's another creeper and a filler, so it'll fill out the space in between the begonias and the creeping jenny. Nice. And give a little pop of color there. So we'll finish planting this one up. If you want to start doing yours, okay. we have some shade-loving plants there. And that's a hosta, which is actually a perennial. Right. Um, I like to use perennials in my pots just because at the end of the season I feel like, okay, now I can put this in the ground and I, I you know, spent, my money was well spent. Not that annuals aren't, they offer color all throughout the season, but that's a nice one and it, it's just so bright and cheery, the hosta. So same thing, don't forget to break up your roots there. And what you want to do with that is say, late September when you're starting to take your pots apart and put some mums in, mm -hmm. take that hosta out and plant it in the ground. Let's get mine in a little bit deeper. Yep, you're good. Nice. So I'm sure some people wonder, well, is that too big for this container when you're putting all these other little ones in as well? Um, you know, they're going to fill out. That's a really good question because at first sometimes your containers either look skimpy or they look a little awkward till things grow on to size. Mm -hmm. But in the end, that's going to be a really nice pot. You have your white alyssum, which is going to hang over the edge mm -hmm. and also be a filler. Uh, general uh, rule of thumb is to pick a filler, a spiller, and a thriller. So <laughs> something that hangs nice. over the edge. Say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> So your filler is basically something that just fills up the pot. Your spiller is something that hangs over the edge and creates a softness around the edge of the pot. And your thriller, in this case, is something like the hosta where it's like a big, you know, big bang for your buck there. We can add some of these stakes, Connie, for a little whimsical touch to our pots. These are really cute and I know you have lots of choices here. Yeah, there's a nice selection, <laughs> perfect for this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill the pots uh, continue filling them with soil. One important thing to remember with the pots, Connie, is water. Um, you know, they're not in the ground, so they're completely dependent on getting watered, and sometimes when they're on a really hot, sunny patio, they dry out quickly. So just make sure you water your pots if they're up out of the ground. Okay, good advice. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with Pocono Landscape Challenge in just a moment.
First Northern Bank and Trust has deep roots in our community. Chartered 100 years ago, First Northern Bank and Trust has grown to 11 branches in the Poconos and Lehigh Valley. Longtime bank employees take pride and pleasure in providing a broad range of services to generations of customers. Today, First Northern Bank and Trust offers the latest in banking technology like remote deposits and online banking. For personal and business banking accounts and loans, contact First Northern Bank and Trust. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Looking for plants you can trust to create a beautiful, easy to maintain garden? All you have to do is look for the Proven Winners name to know you're getting the most distinctive plants on the market. That's because Proven Winners partners with the top plant breeders around the world to ensure varieties that are vigorous, healthy, vibrant, and unique. Chestnut Hill Nursery Garden Center employees are Proven Winners certified. Go to ProvenWinners.com to learn more about what makes Proven Winners plants different from the rest. Proven Winners plants at Chestnut Hill Nursery, Route 209 Broadheadsville. We are KMB Kids. That's right, my dad can fix anything. From well pumps and grinder pumps to water heaters and air conditioners, count on KMB to solve your plumbing, electrical, and HVAC issues. Give us a call for all your plumbing and electrical needs. You can contact us either at kmbplumbing.com on the web, or you can call us at area code 570-460-0111, and you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back to the show. Tracy, let's tell everybody what we learned today. One of my favorites was attracting the birds and the butterflies. That's right. So we learned how to attract birds and butterflies, how to not attract deer, and how to create a beautiful environment on your deck or patio with container gardens. And I know you have flyers here, so if people wanted more information about that. Yes, absolutely. We have some handouts in the store about all these topics, so stop in and pick one up. Thanks, girls. That was great. You know, and I hope you guys at home really enjoy Tracy and Connie's presentation about it, especially plantings in our container gardens. They just a great way to color up the yard for the season. And speaking of the season, you know, it's not too late to plant. You know, with our late spring this year, everything is much later. The season's going much longer, and it's still plenty of time to plant and enjoy all these beautiful blooms and colors for the rest of the summer. Matter of fact, we have such a great selection here at the garden center, and we have new trucks coming in almost on a weekly basis, bringing us some new stock. So don't miss the opportunity to stop by, take a look at the plants, and see what we've got to offer. Of course, our landscape crew is out there working on some great new projects that we can't wait to show you. And don't forget, if you have a project at home you'd like us to take a look at, please give us a call. And who knows, your project may wind up on the next edition of the Pocono Landscape Challenge. So if you'd like more information, stop by here at the Garden Center on Route 209 in Broadheadsville. Give us a call or look us up on the web at chnursery.com. That's the story there. <laughs> and if I could just get it out of the pot. <laughs> Yeah. Look at Slim Shady over there. <laughs> I know, she looks like a supermodel. <laughs> Come on, laugh, do yours. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> I can't do that when you have the camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look for? <laughs> she did good. I think we're going to have to cut there. <laughs> <laughs>